Hello and welcome to episode 12 of my sports and exercise science series. We're going to be following on from episode 11 by learning about the principles of training. By the end of this episode, you will know what the terms specificity, overload, reversibility and variation all mean in relation to training and sports and exercise science. The principle of specificity means that adaptations to training are specific to the training. Specificity applies to the muscle group trained, the speed of training, the intensity of training, the movements of training and the energy systems utilised. Specificity is that physiological adaptations only occur in response to the stress placed on the body and only to the sections that experience this stress. Specificity means if you participate in an aerobic sport such as marathon running, you need to do aerobic training that involves running so that your adaptations improve your performance in that sport. Training should be done at a pace and in an environment that best replicates competition in order to get the best specific gains or adaptations for competition. Continuous training, such as running outside, becomes the best method because it specifically reflects the marathon event. Specificity when applied to resistance training requires that the muscle groups used in the sport are the ones being trained. Training should also seek to replicate a similar movement from the sport at a similar speed. For example, if strength training for a swimmer, a lap pull down machine could be used to replicate the pulling movement of swimming. A swimmer doing front crawl has to pull their arm down in the water repetitively. Now let's talk about overload. Progressive overload is when the workload for a training session progressively increases as the athlete adapts to training. For aerobic training, progressive overload requires that the workload is increased. This can either come from an increase in speed or duration of the training. Let's say I'm training an athlete for their football season and they're doing an 80% heart rate max treadmill run at a 2% incline and 16 kilometers per hour for 45 minutes four times a week. The athlete will adapt to this training and eventually it will become easier for them so it means that they could do the same training in weeks to come with a 75% heart rate max rather than 80% because their body has adapted. As the client gets fitter, this requires me to make an adjustment in training so that training is still at 80% of their heart rate max and still producing the stress needed to cause further adaptation. For example, I might increase the speed to get the client back to 80% of their heart rate max, and this would be an example of progressive overload. For resistance training, progressive overload also requires that the workload is increased. The increase can come from an increase in resistance, repetitions or sets. Alternatively, the rest period between sets can be reduced. Let's now look at an example. So let's say an athlete is training for rugby league and they're doing three sets of 110 kilogram bench press. This happens to be their 12 repetition max and they're doing two minutes in between sets for rest times. The athlete will no longer adapt unless the principle of progressive overload is used, changing the load in order to place sufficient stress upon the body to cause further adaptations. This increase in workload could be done by getting the athlete to complete five sets, though this could be time consuming, or increasing the weight to 120 kilograms, which might be his or her new 12 rep max. You could also decrease the rest time to one minute in between sets. The best way to use progressive overload in resistance training is to increase the resistance by increasing the weight. This results in improvements in strength as well as developing recovery times and muscular endurance. If you were to take somebody that had a 40 kilogram bench press and each week they was able to put one kilogram on the bar, they eventually over weeks would have linear progression as each week the weight is increasing. Next we have reversibility. Reversibility is the fact that when training stops, the adaptations made are lost. Adaptations generally are lost at a similar rate to which they were gained. So if an athlete hypothetically put on one kilogram of muscle in one month, then they got injured, they would lose the same amount of muscle very quickly. However, if the athlete has developed that muscle slowly over six months or maintained their muscle gain for six months, then the loss occurs at a slower rate. 
The more adaptations that have occurred, the more you have to lose. So elite level athletes tend to lose more than recreational athletes because they have more to lose. Athletes need to avoid the reversibility that will occur if training ceases. Training could cease for multiple reasons. The two main reasons are injury and being at the end of a playing season. Reversibility can be avoided by maintaining some level of fitness during the off-season or when injured. This is more problematic for an injured person but can still be achieved by training the uninjured parts of the body whilst recovering. For aerobic training, the effects of reversibility can be seen four to six weeks after training stops. Reversibility can be avoided by maintaining two sessions of aerobic training each week. For resistance training, reversibility can normally be seen in two weeks. The effects can be avoided by maintaining one session a week at the same intensity as previous training. Finally, we have variation. The principle of variety is ensuring training sessions use multiple training types and methods, as well as exercises within these methods. Variety is needed within training, not only to prevent boredom, but also to ensure complete and full development of fitness. An example would be a rugby league player would use various training types throughout the week, such as aerobic, strength, flexibility and anaerobic training, all of which are needed to play the sport as well as possible. Within these training sessions, there will be a variety of different methods used so that anaerobic training was not only always short interval training, but could also include forms of resistance training or plyometrics. Furthermore, interval training sessions do not always have to be on one stationary piece of equipment. It could be, for example, using a variety of different exercises. So in rugby, this could include shuttle runs, followed by repeated tackling, followed by agility runs. You could do this for 20 seconds on and 10 seconds off of each exercise and repeat for a desired amount of sets. For aerobic training, variety would include changes to the training method between fartlek, circuit, continuous and aerobic interval. It would also include variations within this training. So for example, a runner doing a 10k might decide to do the 10k on different surfaces, i.e. a treadmill and outdoor running. For resistance training, variety would mean mixing the training sessions up. This could be using free weights and machine weights and also adding some elastic and hydraulic training in as well. It means when you train your chest muscles that you would use incline, flat and decline activities to ensure the entire pectoral muscle was trained. Now let's recap on what we've learned. Overload refers to the principle that to produce adaptations of improvements in fitness, an individual needs to work at intensities higher than what they're currently used to. Specificity refers to the principle that any adaptations that the body makes are specific to the type of training being undertaken. Reversibility is the use it or lose it principle that while training adaptations can be produced, they can also be lost if training stops or if the training continues at a lower intensity. And finally, variety means varying up training with different movements or different training methods that are still geared towards the client's needs and goals. That concludes episode 12 of my sports and exercise science series. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and don't forget to like and subscribe for more free and educational content. You've been watching UK Fitness Hub, I've been Travis Tarrant and I'll see you in the next episode where we begin study on the short-term responses to training.